Hi everyone, I'm Jackie Garcia, Solution Engineer at Perforce Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to view, comment, vote up, and approve a review in Helix Swarm. So, let's check for the reviews that you need to act on. When you log into Helix Swarm, what you're going to be presented with is the dashboard. The dashboard allows you to focus on reviews that need to be done so that others are not blocked. The dashboard lists the most recently modified reviews first and will also list what your role is in that particular review. So in these two reviews that are waiting for me um, shows me that I'm a reviewer, the activity that last happened, the state of the review which requires a review, and then any tests that are associated with that particular review. And then it tells me the complexity of that particular review. For the review purposes, what I want to take a look at is probably at this particular review, which is seven days ago. And in this one, I know I've been blocking a couple of users, so let's go ahead and take a look at this particular review. So here it's showing me that I've got a couple of files that have been put into this review. It shows me the snippet of the file that has the change in this particular review. And I can expand each and every one of these to see what else, what you know, what's in there in particular. I can come up here to the expand all files, hide in inline comments, show diffs in line. So it gives me a couple of options of what I can do. So go to the next file, go to the previous file or if I wish to use the shorthand keys. So here is where I can basically take a look at a review and the nice thing about this is I can leave a comment in line, for example in here if I wanted to, I can add a comment that says uh, looks good and then I can post that comment and I can post and notify. I can also associate that comment as a task which needs to be completed before the review is actually approved. But on this one because it looks good I'm just going to say post on that one. So that is one of the ways that I can leave a review or a comment on a review. If I wanted to leave a comment for the overall review I can add a comment here as well adding if I can spell adding more comments as well and I can post this one and again the same goes for this where I can do a flag as a task post and notify immediately or just um, post and then notify as soon as I'm done adding all my comments. I can also add a comment to the description of that particular review and it's basically saying update copyright year I can add more information here if I wanted to as well. All right, so that's basically how you can leave comments so that you can have a, you know, collaboration with others that are on the team that are also working with you on this particular review. So one of the other things that we want to take a look at is once I'm able to have that conversation and leave my comments on this particular review, if everything looks good, I can basically go ahead and say, let me go ahead and vote up on this review. And so in here, I can do a vote up or I can do a vote down basically indicating that you know I'm not happy with this particular review but in this case I am pretty happy with the review. It's good to go and as you can see the individuals that are associated or assigned to this review I have my vote up and it shows that John Wakeman I don't show anything from him and basically if I go to the settings for this particular review it's one of the things I want to take a look at and as soon as I go into the settings one of the things I wanted to take a look at is just the general settings. So in here this is where I can set a minimum number of upvotes in order to get this approved but in this particular project I don't have this set so it doesn't matter if I do an upvote it's not counted it's basically the user who is reviewing it can um, go ahead and approve that review. So this is one thing that you have control with regards to the project that you're reviewing. The owner of the project can indicate whether they want to require upvotes or how many upvotes are required for that work for that review. So I'm going to go back to the review and once my page loads one more time then the other thing I can do is once I've gone ahead and done that I can basically say if this 
needs a new revision so that they need to go back and make some more changes or you know do I want to approve it so this is basically one of the workflows that you can take a look at with your team that would say um, go ahead and approve it allow the the user who made the changes submit their changes or I can approve and commit so in those there are some workflows that also will go ahead and have this workflow where they approve and commit the review and then you can also reject it and archive it if it no longer makes any sense to work on this particular review so these are the states you can be used on a particular review and for this one I'm just going to go ahead and say let's go ahead and approve it which is to me that I found is the most used workflow that um, other customers are using made good changes good to go tests pass and then I can say approve and once it's approved and this is updated in P4V, um, P4V will also show you the state of the review as well as users associated in this particular project will also get an email notification when there's an upvote, when there's a change in the state of the review. Um, and as you can see, this review is now approved. So if I go back to my reviews, I can now show. So this is showing me that it's now in the approved state so this review is good to go and that is how you go ahead and give feedback to users that are working with you on a particular project